Hello. Um, good afternoon, all the Web 2.0 fans. I have to shorten my presentation for, to leave time for Vice President Elgo. Yeah, so I will try to use about 10 minutes to share some of my ideas on Web 2.0 philosophy, the philosophy behind uh, all the people uh, participating Web 2.0 movements. Uh, but I will use um, a, a comparison of uh, two paradigm, you know, one is called censorship paradigm and another one is called shareism paradigm. It's totally different. It's different uh, version, it's different thinking model, it's a different uh, uh, direction of uh, uh, managing the world from uh, uh, different kinds of uh, uh, fields, including financial world, including those uh, technical world, as well as those uh, uh, governance. So. Let's start to try to understand what happened in the past several years uh, after uh, the blogging stuffs and Web 2.0 stuff uh, emerged and uh, how we will go maybe in the next few years. We can see that we have about tenfold of information increasing in the past five years or past six years uh, uh, roughly. Um, it's, it means that we generate a lot of uh, new kind of uh, information scale, you know, and we can see that different kinds of information emerged from different kinds of devices and different social applications. The UGC takes a leading role in this, can, this increasing. And we can see such kind of increase uh, will, will never stop because a lot of people take the passion to participate in the creation works. So there must be some kind of philosophy behind it, why people would love to share all the time uh, any second. So it's a kind of philosophy I'm studying from uh, Berkman Center. Uh, I'm now as a research fellow there uh, to try to understand the behavior, macro behavior be inside people's mind. I call it shareism. Shareism is something that not like uh, our traditional understanding of sharing because sharing is very easy to say, but it's very hard to practice to everyone, everyone at first. For example, if I ask you uh, now, if you are sharing now, maybe not, because you're, maybe you're, you're uh, working on some maybe very professional work, maybe you're in a very close business environment, maybe you're, uh, you're uh, uh, fearing about being sued by some commercial enti entities, you know, uh, uh, about the violence of uh, copyright. So it's all kinds of social settings prevent us from sharing. So we should try to explore some kind of new theories behind those Web 2.0. We have to explore into a smaller scale, like we, like we human beings invented the microscope. You know, we are seeing the web content are becoming smaller and smaller granularity. It's very important to understand a new world of, um, by, by uh, uh, studying the Web 2.0 world. We can see that more and more content become macro content and they can be referenceable by anyone else by providing some uh, timestamp URL. So you can always try to find the timeline of the information, you know, and see how this information travel around the world. So this kind of exploration is very important because the information scale has been downsized to very small scale and we call them me, you know. And fortunately, we have a lot of uh, people participate in this uh, new movement to generate n new kinds of information, smaller scale information, and people can, be con can connect to each other uh, very easily with the new kind of model called universal six degree of separation. And then fortunately we have a lot of new applications emerged to record such kind of information and generate a lot of big torrent around the world. Even the, 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 the information is very small, they can connect to each other and uh, spread all of the world in one night. And then we can see that the original gap between the private and the public space, information space, can be, uh, can be uh, um, uh, glued together you know, to generate a new spectrum of information. So we have a lot of new uh, copyright licenses emerge, like Creative Commons, you know, people can be used. But the problem is that who, will, who, who, is, who fears such kind of change? There must be some people, you know, that don't understand the, the, the change and they still keep the traditional thinking model. Like the, the, the yin-yang yin yang, uh, uh, um, 
metaphor in Chinese culture, you know, that th there should be the, a good balance uh, between yin and yang, but uh, the traditional 1.0 words uh, always uh, stay like this. The, one, the yang always beat down the yin, you know. They, don't, they, they want to control, they want to keep all the things, you know, be in their own, you know, uh, thinking model and try to be nanny to all the people. And then we have the great firewall in China, the censorship system, to let people, you know, uh, um, uh, keep unified information uh, be accessed uh, by all the people and, all, uh, and let all the people try to follow the same value. So there are a lot of keywords put into the blacklist and the great firewall uh, 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 try to limit people's access to the outside information. But uh, there must be some disru disruptions in this world. That's why we are now in China, we can see a lot of uh, Web 2.0 applications emerge. I'll use, their, I'll use the, 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 the English language of applications to try to bypass the, the, the great firewall system. Uh, I, I use this picture to try to illustrate how those applications are well connected. And uh, we can see more and more building blocks will be put on this social pipeline system. And all the applications, you know, can, be, uh, can build their own tunnels to try to help users, help end users to publish information in one place and uh, let all the information flow over the whole system. So that can make, make it possible for people to publish information and try to share the people around the world. It's very low cost and uh, very very uh, less pain, uh, painful, you know, to everyone first. So we can see the media industry changed also, it's changing. And uh, the traditional propaganda uh, model of uh, uh, media in industry is very hi hierarchical. People, uh, those professional uh, 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 um, journalists, you know, and some reporters and some editors, they work together to try to cook some very good, you know, uh, stuffs and broadcast to a lot of people it, to, to reach uh, millions of con uh, audience. But the current world is different because we have many to many model, you know, to connect people with different social pipeline system. And people don't need to rely on one uh, information channel or, or, or very uh, single, uh, media channels. So we can see that the social media fabric is totally different from the traditional hierarchical media industry. And we can see that is, it generates new thinking of journalism as well. Because the, uh, when we call journalism 2.0, we have to include, today we have to include the professional media as well as the grassroots media. Because the grassroots media also can help contribute to the part of truth. So the truth can be more complete by well integrating the Web 1.0 and Web 2.0. So it's becoming more and more realistic to our current world that the truth can be really revealed by the collaboration of the two, two kind of thinking. So I'm, I'm very interested in the future world. You know, if we can make the Web 1.0 well integrated with the Web, web 2.0 world, and we can make the world better. So the basic thinking that you should share today, you should build your social portfolio today, you should try to use more and more social application today, but don't need to pay more uh, uh, um, efforts to try to log on to any kinds of uh, applications, you know, one by one. You, you only need some very single point of identity, you know, to try to travel between those social applications, generate your own social pipeline system. So I think it's a, it's a beautiful world in front of us. And the only thing is that you share today. Thank you.